Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on this Friday the 12th of November. Today we're particularly keeping in mind the and giving thanks for the ministry of Charles Simeon who was born in Reading in 1759 who was is listed as a priest and evangelist I'm not sure who someone who preaches can't be an evangelist but that's another issue he certainly during his life became very dedicated to the reformed movement and was part of the group that established the Church Missionary Society uh, which is still very active um, and appreciated as a group who preach faithfully across our own country. We're also mindful today of the continuing work of COP26, um, those who have been at the meeting either as delegates or as protesters to try and keep them honest to promote a courage and bravery that we would hope to find in our leaders especially those whose countries are not yet massively impacted on behalf of those countries which are already being swallowed by rising tides. We keep in mind too the HSC students who today come to the end of the first week of their exams, an extraordinary year for them and we pray for their continuing involvement in education, thanking you for their God, for their and their families and teachers resilience through an extraordinary year of education for them. We keep those things and others in our minds and hearts. And this morning our psalm is Psalm 33 and our scripture is from the 24th chapter of Matthew. As we pray, begin our prayers, we're mindful that we meet on Indigenous land. I am on Waramai land, but the cathedral and the ministry that emanates from there is on Wabikal land, and we give thanks for them and pray for their leaders, past, present, and emerging. Friday morning prayer. Through Christ, let us offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. We have complete freedom to go into the whole, most holy place by means of the death of Jesus. He opened for us a new way, a living way, through the curtain, through his own body. Since we have a great high priest set over the household of God, let us draw near with a sincere heart and a sure faith, with hearts that have been made clean from a guilty conscience and bodies washed with pure water. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, Set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 33 Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, for it befits the just to praise him. Give the Lord thanks upon the harp, and sing his praise to the lute of ten strings. O sing him a new song, make sweetest melody with shouts of praise. For the word of the Lord is true, and all his works are faithful. He loves righteousness and justice, and the earth is filled with the loving kindness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and their numberless stars by the breath of his mouth. 
He gathered the waters of the sea as in a water skin and laid up the deep in his treasures. Let the whole earth fear the Lord and let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord frustrates the counsels of the nations. He brings to nothing the devices of the people. But the counsels of the Lord shall endure for ever, the purposes of his heart from generation to generation. Blessed is that nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose to be his own possession. The Lord looks down from heaven and surveys all the children of Adam. He considers from his dwelling place all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashioned the hearts of them all and comprehends all that they do. A king is not saved by a mighty army, nor is a warrior delivered by much strength. A horse is a vain hope as a deliverer, nor can he rescue any by his great power. But the eye of the Lord is on those that fear him, and those that trust in his unfailing love, to deliver them from death, and to feed them in the time of dearth. We have waited eagerly for the Lord, for he is our help and our shield. Surely our heart shall rejoice in him, for we have trusted in his holy name. Let your merciful kindness be upon us, O Lord, even as our hope is in you. Holy God, through your beloved Son you reconciled all things to yourself, making peace by the blood of his cross. Fill us and those for whom we pray with your peace and joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our text this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew. Chapter 24, beginning at the first verse. As Jesus came out of the temple <coughs> and was going away, his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. And he asked them, You will see all these, do you not? Truly I tell you, not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us then, when will this be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered them, Be there that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumours of wars, See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All of this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. Then they will hand you over to be tortured, and will put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. Then many will fall away, and they will betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because in the increase of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all the nations. And then... The end will come. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. Jesus, Saviour of the world, Come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. 
by your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free, and we look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Saviour and mighty Deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> and as we remember Charles Simeon and his dedication to the scriptures, our collect today is very apt. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and the comfort of your holy word we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we continue to pray for our world and give thanks to you, Creator God, for your generosity and hospitality witnessed in the world, we pray for those who are not at the table, uh, do not have voice and are not able yet to benefit by your bounty. We're mindful of the role of the leaders of the world in changing the way the world is to its being closer to how you would want it to be. We pray too for the leaders of the church. We pray for our bishops in this diocese in particular. We pray for the various ministries which, as COVID restrictions are lifted, are able to open up again, praying that the creativity that has maintained connection and community will sustain and keep us flourishing. We pray for those who are willing to speak the word of Lord for their faithfulness to its truth and honesty and welcome and clarity and we pray then for all of those who teach SRE and our schools we pray that those who hear those dedicated teachers might have their hearts opened to the comfort of your word We pray too for those who are unwell, praying particularly for those whose shelter and security are vulnerable to changes and chances of our world. We pray today for those whose lives have been impacted by the amount of rain in the last couple of days. We give thanks and pray for the resilience and strength of those who are still working to maintain the health of our country, especially those involved in care of those with COVID and most particularly for those involved in research. We pray for those whose 
who are still restricted from visiting family and friends. Praying that we're mindful of the need of community and the blessing it can be when you are truly at the heart of it. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. Peace be to us all and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.